Work continues on Liberty, our 71 Chevelle. Big project here. This 12 bolt is coming out. We've got a custom nine inch going in. We've got radiator, ignition, steering wheel, wiring, whole bunch of stuff. Let's dig in. There's a lot to do. Well, as you can see, fellers and fellettes, the 12 bolt is out of the Chevelle. It's laying on the ground back here. Now this axle is good. There's nothing wrong with this. It's got a 411 or 456 gear in it. I can't remember. It's done great. It served its purpose. It went well with the small block, but now we're literally tripling the horsepower and torque. That is not gonna work, especially with the stock trailing arms and the homemade ladder bars and, well, I'll show you the bracketry and stuff. This is gonna end up over in Independence. So we'll be doing a 10 bolt to 12 bolt upgrade over there. And then this is also gonna be getting an upgrade, moving to a custom nine inch, which has GM ears and stuff on it. I'll show you that in a minute as well. But let's take a look at what we got out of the car and what is essentially gonna be going into Independence and then we'll have to do a gear change so we can go more than 44 miles an hour on the highway. That'd be pretty cool. So here's some of that bracketry stuff. It's all pretty much bent, twisted. It's got old hardware in it. We did replace the air shocks and some other hardware with grade eight stuff. As soon as we get these trailing arms out, I'll show you what those are. They ran some pipe in there and welded it to stiffen it up. It's an old school trick. Again, it worked, but not gonna work for what we're doing. Here's these ladder bars, and I, I don't know if these are homemade or if this is some sort of kit, but they're very, very primitive. And the way that they're colored on, well, you can actually see that they were slipping or turning. So we still had axle wrap anyway, but you know, allegedly these would help with tire shake, tire bounce and axle wrap. So these probably will not be going back on independence, just this nice 12 bolt here. And uh, we'll go ahead and use these arms. They're not bad either. I don't think they're twisted up. This one here, you can see the metal welded in there. And what that does is keep these from twisting back and forth this way, or essentially the axle doing this. So it helps it launch straight which this car did really, really good. Chad and Donnie are here helping. I'm actually working on the front of the car today. They'll be working back here. We'll try to stay out of each other's way. The other thing we already started on was the fuel system. This tank has got to go. Um, it has a homemade sump on it. It leaks. You can't fill it all the way, if you guys remember that. It just pours fuel out. So we dropped this tank out. It's going bye-bye. And we'll be putting some other tank back in at some point or another. We'll probably even go ahead and reuse these and the shocks over on Independence. The spring cups should still be in that other Chevelle, Independence Chevelle. So all of this stuff, hopefully we can repurpose and save and save money, most importantly, and not have to buy a bunch of stuff here. And then we're gonna be putting in uh, new trailing arms over here. TRZ stuff, it's really nice stuff actually. It's fully adjustable. So when we get this power going, we can actually get it to the ground and we can get this car leaving straight. It's gonna take a lot of adjusting, however. One of the biggest challenges we're faced with right away is getting the other axle over here. It's buried behind a bunch of stuff on the other side. We gotta get this axle over there. We gotta get that axle over here. And then Chad and Donnie are gonna start wrestling that. I'll probably go up front and start on the radiator and start doing some wiring and ignition stuff up there. So here's that bottom trailing arm. See, he just welded a pipe in there. Kept her from twisting. But here is our new rear end. This thing is beautiful. Never had a new rear end. We were just talking, we don't know what to do with this. I don't know, like it's kind of shiny and nervous to scratch it, that's weird. 
but uh, this should do everything we want it to do and more. It's a Ford 9 inch, so it's got this third member here, a center section. If we ever wanted to change gears, which we're never going to get that serious about racing, but you could just boop, boop, that easy. It's got a 325 gear in it. It's got a GM dorsal fin up here. We've got Bayer brakes. They powder coated them up for us. It's already got the lines on it and everything. It's pretty much ready to rock. And then you can see it's got the GM ears. So we can just plop this right in the car and not have to change the frame or anything like that. And then it's got adjustable shock tab do hippies that we can hopefully configure our TRZ stuff to. Uh, had this made a long time ago. It's actually been sitting on a pallet. This was supposed to go in independence, but then we learned real quick that the frame was bad and, and all of that stuff. So it's kind of just been sitting there. But long story short, what I'm rambling about is this was set up for that TRZ equipment. This whole axle was. So now that we have another TRZ kit, this should hopefully play very nice and uh, work well for us. Now the 325, I kind of guessed on the gear. I wanted something that we could do street. We could do, of course, burnouts. And then if we wanted to go drag racing, this would be okay-ish. You know, 350, 360 to a 390 even would probably be more ideal for drag racing uh, with a three-speed, but it's going to work for now. We'll just, we'll just make do. So all this junk goes away. Got to figure out how to hang this thing. So here's the old one. Here's the guy she said not to worry about. It's got a nice heim joint in here, fully adjustable, significantly stronger. And what we're doing now is, is taking measurements. These are 22 inches. We're going to set this one up as 22 inches. And then we've got the top one. This goes over the ear on the axle. This goes into the frame bucket. We'll also adjust these to what was in there and it'll give us a good rough start to getting this thing in correctly. And then instead of those springs, we're gonna be doing double adjustable coilover, which I don't think are here yet, they're on the way. And uh, that'll be our suspension. We could adjust ride height with that and rebound and all of the stuff I know nothing about. These guys are making, <laughs> making real quick work. Now we just need something to hold the rear end in place. Yeah. So now we're over on Independence, and this is a big part of getting this car back on the road, is getting a decent rear end. It had a 10 bolt in here with uh, like 270 something gears, I believe, and a mini spool. Not ideal for the highway. This 12 bolt's gonna be beefy, and we could put a nice gear in it, something that you know, breaks the mullet off, but we could still run 65, 70 down the highway. First step, however, is going to be getting all of this equipment out of here and putting all of these stock trailing arms and everything in. Boy, we got a lot of, a lot of work to do. I just saw, looks like a NASA bundle of fuel lines and digital stuff. I think, I think, Chad, we can unbolt this uh, hitch as well and cut that sway bar out so I could put a stock tank back in here. Yeah, this thing that sway bar 50 volts has to come out for that. Yeah. We might be able to use them QA1s for Liberty for the time being, maybe. Yeah. Waiting on coil springs for that, but. It's going to be nice to get this thing back on the ground on wheels. So I'm going to dig in on this while they're back there on the rear ends. Where we left off was we got, you know, the air fuel cavern in, the fuel make it have in there, lightning whirler, the motion roller covers, charging whirler WP, we got the shift machine, all the lines in, the belts are on. All that looks great. So I think we're going to try to get the big items done first. So next would be kind of the cooling system or at least the ice cube maker and the fans and all of that stuff. Because then we can come back and start doing all the plumbing 
and wiring for the whole vehicle at once. So we're going to go ahead and use a cold case on this and dual fans. You guys have seen these before. I'm going to go ahead and rip it out, show you what we got in the box. So a lot of you have emailed me and asked where to find these brads. It's uh, coldcaseradiators.com, I believe. They got pretty much a little something for everything. Okay. Oh, and if you want to save big money, use code VICEGRIP at checkout and you'll get free shipping on this, which is a huge savings. That's just for you guys. Okay, we got fan. Fan. This is a wiring kit for the fans. We got the shroud box. And then the actual radiator right here. They're big old two core. Whoa, hefty, Moses. There we go. So we'll get it fully assembled and then we'll drop the whole rig in as one unit. I found that's kind of easier. This bad boy up. Yes. Yeah. They even have these for LS swaps and stuff like that, where it has the steam ports and manual or automatic. Okay. Of course, you got to have stickers. That's why we buy everything. It's just for the sticker. It goes like that. Basically the shroud, you can self tap it or you can pop rivet it. Either way, get the hardware for both. And then we could just quickly bolt the fans on and then we'll be ready to set this into the rig after that. Yeah. 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 Alright now. I'm gonna run these through. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sure. Two up top. Alright then, sure, why not? Now I just gotta mount the fans up. The independence is a roller again. Jan Donnie made quick work of that. I, these sacked out springs that came out of Liberty, pretty nice ride height. Of course, she's she's a nose light without the bigger blocks and the shift machine, but back on all paws once again. Now, we're gonna roll this outside and get it on a trailer and gonna be sending this up to Volunteer Muffler and Performance because the guys are going to make a frame stiffening kit for it. Well, it's not a kit, they're making it themselves. And they're doing the same on Monte Baro. Basically, it's, it looks like a jungle gym underneath, but nice. And you can't climb it, really, unless you're skidding on your back. Anyway, it ties everything together and it keeps this thing from twisting and jamming the door shut. And will basically act as our frame because we don't really have one. So we're going to send that up, have them do that, tie everything in. It also has drive shaft hoops and kind of a cross member, doesn't it? In mm -hmm. a sense? Yeah. So that'll be all done, then it'll come back and then we could start working on a power plant and transmission. We'll probably go through and build something for both. And we got the rear in it. So this summer we should be cruising once again in Independence. Got the winter. 
Chuck Dunn. No brakes? That's weird. Oh, they're back again. Okay. So Independence will sit outside here, chalked up with the rock, and uh, they'll swing back with the trailer and grab it. They're going to do that while I'm traveling and on the road filming something else anyway, so we're not wasting any time. We're getting right to it. And then we got to address all this plumbing and wiring and brakes again. And, you know, we got like a vacuum pump and a power steering reservoir that's not needed anymore. It is going to be a huge undertaking. Basically, we're going to have to rebuild the car once again, but I'm ready for it. I want to see this thing on the road again. Well, the radiator is all put together and looking mighty fine. Oh, lied to you. Hold on. Aha. Well, help me understand. Let's see. Now the radiator is all together. Okay, so before I throw this in the car, my back is in a real bad way right now, so I'm gonna try to limit how much I'm cranked over that thing. I'm gonna put the adapters on this to get us to dash 80 million, or whatever this is, so we can run these honking fittings, which will then run to this fire hose, you know, for the whew, coolant transfer situation. And this is really cool, so I kind of wanted to show you this. I honestly didn't even know this existed until my buddy mentioned it when I was ordering up the other stuff. So the kit comes with these clamp relators, the clamp, and then there's this nut thing, the Titan stuff, the actual, you know, fitting part, and then it's got an O-ring and the hardware in a baggie here. So how this works, in theory, I'm going to do it without the O-ring because I don't want to gnar all that up. But essentially, end of day, the construct of the unit is this is going to be fixed onto there with an O-ring. And now we have gone from this standard outlet to this. And then we'll have the fitting. And the clamp here clamps that piece on and one side is higher than the other. And what that's doing is grabbing that lip or that ridge, clamping on there, and it's going to be holding this nut. Go ahead and just throw it together quick. Like this on here. So this can't go anywhere now, right? So when this gets screwed into this, and this is tightened, this bottom nut, we're gonna hold this part stationary. What happens is it gets drawn into this lip here, and the pressure from that then seals the rubber O-ring to that. Boom, like this, squishes it together. It's pretty cool, actually. So. Had I known this existed, we would have been doing this on Independence and Charlotte and all sorts of stuff because these don't cavitate, they don't squish shut, they don't flex. I, has one ever blown? I don't know. These are the questions we need to ask. You know what I mean? But it seems like a gooder thing to do right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this together. There's a couple things it says in here one of the primary things that looks important is you can't just ramrod these clamps on here because if you look at this, it's kind of an egg shape. So if I were to just ramrod this all the way in with an impact, <laughs> whoops, it's gonna deform the shape of our outlet. So we gotta be very careful there to tighten this snugly and evenly. Got it, check. I'm telling myself this because you know me, everything is 900 foot pounds. And it also says, potentially maybe sometimes this could back off a little bit from vibration and the vehicle twisting and things of that nature. So I'm gonna go ahead right now, knowing the abuse that this thing is gonna go through and use some light 
thread locker, not only for lubrication assembling it, but also it'll keep it together as your for gooder. Yes. And then if we ever need to pull the rad to do work or anything like that, it's just unscrew a fitting, unscrew a fitting, these fittings here, giant AN things, and boom, it's out. Nice and easy. Okay, so let's get this done. First step it says is affix this into here. It's not in the constructions, but I am gonna put two tiny little drops of rid of in here because that's gonna hold this in place, the O-ring, because I don't wanna you know, guess and make sure that it's not bound up or crooked or anything like that. Okay, and then it says run this into this, couple turns, whoop, whoop, got it. Then it says put that on, okay, I can do that. And then we're gonna tighten this clamp. And it says, once everything is lightly assembled, fully and evenly tighten the clamps onto the inlet and outlet. I think I can do that. So we'll throw this on here. Throw this on here. Okay. And basically, because we're, we're limited by the amount of threads that are shown, we don't want this to be super high for writing at the very top because this will bottom out before it actually, you know, mates the surfaces. Okay, good. So I'm gonna go down here just off my weld. We don't wanna be digging into that weld. And we'll tighten this up. Whoa, see, I gotta be careful here. She's already, oh, I see. There we go, she was bound. Oh no, never see that again. Found it, I'm seeing it again. So just go in here and make sure these are even. Right above that weld. And I said, just take the slop out of the the, the what, are, what are these, clamps? Yeah. It says, tighten until the wobble on the clamps is taken out. I think we're there. I mean, it's snug. I don't have to like, you know, really ranch dressing on it. Gaps are even. So this should still waller. Yep. Okay, use the crescent wrenches and channel locks. I'm your huckleberry. You know what I mean? And then we're gonna hold this one stationary because we don't want it to be spinning and ruin that uh, gasket seal device. Forgot to put my thread sealer on here. So I was just showing you what it would look like. You know what I mean? So now here's the question. Can Oh, we can. I'm doing this wrong. So stop following my instruction at this point. And we'll put a little bit of this on here. Mm -hmm. The blue and the aluminum looks nice. Throw this back on. We're back to where we were essentially. Okay, settle down. Now, hold this still. Tighten it. Now we have converted it. That is sweet. This fitting will probably look like this because we're gonna be coming over to the, this is the top, this is the bottom. We're gonna be coming over to the WP. Boom. Pretty slick. Just gotta do the other side and then we'll be ready to into the car over there. It's so cold in here, I can't even whistle. Yeah, time to light a fire in here somewhere. Trash can fires are effective. So now that I got the AN fittings on the rad already, 
I need to do this one. Might as well do it now. And hindsight being bifocals, you know, a guy probably should have done this uh, before we put the WP on, but is what it is. I guess in some cases, if you're switching to this, a lot of you would be doing it this way anyway. So same exact process. We're gonna we're gonna slide this over that, and we're gonna just buckle this over the water pump here. See, it's got that same lip. Spin this around so you can see it. See there, once this is tight, it's not gonna wanna come off this lip. So let me uh, throw that on quick, getting her tightened up. I may even take this belt off quick because all I gotta do is just run this turnbuckle down and then I can get my ranches. Just a swanging in here. I was able to sneak that one in there. It actually wasn't too bad with the belt on. Had to rotatalize it. We got about a sixteenth of an inch off of the oversized. And then, you know, quarter inch here on the. So I think it should be pretty good. So double check. We got the rubber thingy things in there. So I think we're ready to go ahead and set that radiator in here. See how that fits. I got some of these out just in case for the top part. Not sure if they'll fit all the way. I only got one left, original one, for the uh, upper holder downer thing. Those are important. We don't want to wall our holes in a radiator. Big fan of yardsticks, but I found these things. Apparently they roll up in here. And uh, it's got numbers. So I'm gonna measure my rubber bushing grommet thingies. Call it 28 and a half. 28 and, 28 and 5 eighths. And just make sure these two are gonna communicate. Ooh, 29. 29 on the welds. Can we make an adjustment down here? That should probably work. We'll pretend we didn't do that. Okay, here we go. Here we go now. Yep. Yep. <sighs> beep. 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 All that worrying for nothing. Here's the factory indentations. This thing is right on the money. Just feeling the grommets on the bottom, make sure it sits in the saddle. I just don't want metal on metal because we're planning on putting some miles down on this puppy. Isn't it funny how the sharpest thing on earth, even more so than razors and knives, is radiator fins? How does that even happen? Like, if I go in for surgery and the guy pulls out a rad, I'm not even mad. He knows what he's doing. Them puppies is sharp. You know, Bo Duke. Was it Bo Duke? John Schneider. Before he was a good old boy. He actually had a music career. You're welcome. Look it up. Okay, so these are uh, dormant part number 926276. It's kind of a GM rad grommet thing. We're gonna put these in here. Same story as below deck. We just don't want any metal on metal. Okay. And I should try to find, it was years ago, when I had the one made for independence, but they make a I keep wanting to say shawl, scarf, hoodie. They make a thing that goes on here. Not only does it look nice to take up this big open spot, but also it uh, keeps the airflow going straight this way and doesn't make it want to divert and come on top of this up again the hood. It kind of scoops it. It's a scoop, scoops it down there. Only had three of these body bolts. 
GM shaped them like that so they're easier to put in. But lo and behold it, over there in the tool chest, I found this random bag that has four of them and they're the right size. So we're gonna go ahead and just cross thread those in to hold this piece into place. If I end up making a new thing here, then we might go ahead and put the right hardware in, but for now, that'll work. <coughs> Never see that again. I guess we're back to three. So that's pretty good. We, uh, back to where we started, at least it's not backwards. You know what I mean? Shiny bolt over budget. Oh yeah, I dropped one I'll never find again. Found it, here it is. I feel pretty good about that. Ain't gonna lie. Snug. Well, the guy's been playing around with these big AN fittings, trying to figure out the best combination and look here. I've got a couple 90s, whatever these are, and then one more-ish, and then a straight. And this is kind of the combination I came up with. You can see here, you know, the goal is to get these fittings facing each other as best as possible. That'll be a nice short little cut there. That should be fine. This one, if I had another one like that, I could send off more at this angle where it would come kind of like this, but it'd be really close to the valve cover. I don't mind this. I'll have kind of a hose like this because remember, eventually we're gonna have that Pro Charger back in here, hopefully, someday. So I think this is kind of what it's gonna look like. I'll snug these up, get them facing the way I want them to face, and then we'll run some measurements, cut that line, and make up these gigantic hoses, which will be our rad hoses. That one should be super short, but man, this is gonna give it a whole nother look. This thing is sweeter than two balls of honey, and I ain't kidding you. Daryl stopped by to help. We've been having to keep him out of here a little bit because of the New kitty, gotta get them acclimated, huh, bud? So we think we got under supervision here. This is probably our length, give or take a couple cat hairs. We're gonna go snip it off in the vise and then we'll start putting these fittings on. You're getting big, buddy. You're getting pretty big. Kinda like how I've been grinding next to these gas tanks here. Gotta get this ready for surgery. There we go. Get the PPE on. Never be too safe. Get a nice fresh cut. Boom. Walk it off, you'll be fine. We'll take some brake juice, clean it up a little bit. Where'd my trash can go? Where'd my oil pans go? I'll tell you what, guy is not used to these fancy fan dangled fittings. It's eating the guy's breakfast I didn't have. You know what I mean? We're getting there though, this side, Got a little frayed, had to put some, I don't know, Suzy Q tape or whatever this is. Hide this stuff, too spendy to start over, so we ain't doing that. Good enough for who it's for. <laughs> Welcome back to How Bad Did Derek Mess It Up on today's episode. We're gonna see how short Derek got the hose. This might take a while. I think 
Ajá. cagar. We got a snug lies on them. Just a little bit. I don't think I, let me check. I might have an A and wrench for that. Well, I'll be dipped in pig slap. Had one. Oh, we don't want this to move. Though. We got a 14 wrench operation going on here. That don't fit on that. So let's hold this. And then just, tss, tss, that's it. That's all we need. We don't want to bind them up. Well, come on. It took longer to put two fittings on than put the whole rod together. Yep, that'll probably leak. Perfect. Well, other than where I destroyed the hose and am too cheap to, you know, fix that, that looks pretty good. We got the nice anglage, swoopage going on. Should last a lifetime. Now, I get to do that all over again down there. Yes. 94 years later. Got it. Gonna throw this in quick. Rad hoses, done. Okay, radiator is in. That's looking good. This little one was kind of a fight. You had to get that length just perfect for those two fittings to come in there. This is the solid motor mount. It doesn't have like a polyurethane bushing. So this engine's not gonna be rocking back and forth at all. If it's rocking at all, it's pulling the frame with it. So don't have to worry about too much slack in here, but you can see there is, there is a little kink in there for a little bit of movement. Now, I think I'm gonna move on to a little bit of wiring or at least start planning all of this out because I need to get these digital fans wired up, my favorite. Nope. And then we might as well wire this. And then we've got, uh, we're gonna need Temperature sensor for the gauge that's in there. We're gonna need a sending unit, essentially for the fan relay as well. And then we need to eliminate these two wires which go to a voltage regulator on the firewall on the inside because this is internally regulated. So there's a regulator built in here. So it's a single wire or a one wire alternator. So this will go on here and charge our system. These two go away. We gotta add fan wires and we need to add that. So once we get all of that laid in, then I think we can try to put this in a loom or at least wrap it in tape or something like that. And maybe we'll just stay on the trend of wiring for a little while. We gotta get, uh, I gotta drill a hole big enough to get this buckle in for the lightning whirler. We gotta put lightning hoses on. There's just a lot of wiring to do, but that would be a start anyway. So let's dig in. Let's get this stripped out, get that blue and white snipped off, start pulling some wire. Yep, I got updates. Come on in here and take a look. The guy actually just got quite a bit done, but it doesn't look like it. And that's, you know, wiring. It's a bunch of time consuming stuff and you can't even tell, perfect. So we went ahead and ran a pipe plug in here. It's the same as these two and the water pump. They came in the intake kit, might as well use them, free, check, got it. This is the temperature switch. This is a switch that's normally open. So the contact is open. And that runs to a relay that we're going to be setting up inside. Normally I hang those out here, but we're going to do it differently. And that's the fan control. So when that reaches a certain temperature, the open switch closes. And this is actually the ground wire. So if I were to disconnect this when everything else is wired and just touch it to the engine block, the fans would kick on. So that's what that's going to do around that. This is the old temperature sending unit for the gauge in here. I went over and tore that out of the 400, put it in here, it worked. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with the wire, nothing wrong with the gauge. We're gonna use all that. Ran this wire down here, ran loom over all of this and this, cause this is bright yellow. It's the only color I got. So everything's gonna be yellow. <laughs> That's fine. 
did some old school soldering here. We got a wide off that goes to each fan. Then we've got connectors here, plugs. We can unplug it there, or we also have these plugs here. There's one for each fan, one there and one there. So if we ever have to service a fan or say one dies for some reason, I could just undo the hardware, unplug it, slide the fan out, slide the next one in. I don't have to pull the whole rad or do anything else. Should make that really nice. Grounded it up right here. Just went right to the frame, cleaned that up, ran a washer. Both are grounded right there. This frame rail is actually grounded directly to the battery in the back on the roll bar. So it's that's a really good ground for this vehicle. I should run another one from here. In fact, I'll probably do that if I could find, well, I guess we'll probably run yeller, you know, keep up with the, with the code here. But I need, need to run another ground from here to the engine. I gotta get a, maybe I'll go to town tomorrow and get an actual ground strap and do that. That would be good as well. So now we've gotta start chasing things on the inside. I've gotta drill this hole here. I'll probably do it from the inside this way. I don't want to ball up any wiring. These two self-tappers are actually a voltage regulator, which we're going to be eliminating because again, this is an internally regulated charging whirler. And then we've got to hang the relay for the fans. We've got to take ballast resistors out. And then we've got to put in our new ignition box and clean up some of that wiring because, well, if you forgot, this thing looks like a spaceship control board in here. Whew, yeah. So that's kind of the next phase probably. Really looking forward to it. So most of this fun is just going to be deciphering the code and understanding what in the world. There's two ballast resistors in here. I cobbled this in to get home so we'd have a charger. So, yeah. Sweet. This is the voltage regulator that's got to come out. I could start there. I could start tracing some of this wiring. One's going to be 12 volt switch. One's going to be power. So that's probably switched based on all the lugs. This was the field. So then this one. Yeah, that comes down to here. So I could start taking some of the stuff apart, get the ballast resistors out of here. And then I was thinking about putting the fan relay right in that provision or we can even put it up here I guess since we're gonna have a big gaping hole in the firewall we can replug it that way if we gotta replace it it's easy to get to and maybe think about replacing this ignition box that's just taped in stuff like that wadded up this one's good we'll keep it with the coil and the other lightning whirler but we want the one with the rev limiter. Well, let me get some tools and uh, it's going to be really fun laying up against this the whole time. See if we can start tearing into this. Well, I think a guy's pretty well got this buttoned up for now. I still need to replace the ignition coil wire to the lightning can here, but otherwise it's good enough for now. Uh, we got the new MSD, which has a rev limiter here. Got the new coil in. Of course, that's all been wired in. We got tack wire, that one's not used. Fan relay's done. We got the big negative that runs to the battery. Uh, soldered that in actually because there's there's no fitting to go from those two sizes and the positive cable of the battery comes up here and I added a fuse in that and went ahead and put the USBs back in and the lighter there so we could charge devices on the road pretty well good enough for now now they make boxes like leash electronics makes a box that'll run blinkers and emergency flashers and all this stuff Someday that might be a to-do. It's probably about the size of the MSD box. 
and controls everything. So we'd just have that over here and all this stuff would go away. Now wiring on the inside of the car, I've got trans brake left, which we'll wait until we get the car up on the rack probably. And the we have a line lock for doing our burnouts. I'm gonna go ahead and wire that in. That's those two wires over there. So taking a look at the line lock here, it's in line for the front brakes. So basically what you do is you pump up your brakes, hold them firm, hit the button, it activates the solenoid, and then when you let go of the brakes, it's gonna hold the front brake for you, but release the rear. So without holding any pedals, you can do a burnout, and you're not wasting your rear brake shoes, I guess is the idea, and it's easier to do a burnout, especially for clutch. Now, I just got to thinking, I gotta do brakes on this at some point, so I may wait, because I may not plumb this in well, I probably should. I'll go ahead and wire this up. I got electrical tape in here. We'll get this wired in. And then when we replace the master cylinder, at least this should be the same. I might run a manual again. So I don't know if we're going to be using that distribution block or not. We'll cross that stream when the bridge arrives. So on the inside here, we've got two buttons on the shifter. So again, one would be for burnouts, one would be for staging. So that'd be the transmission. So you hold that button down, you don't have to hold the brake. And you can rev the engine up to where you want. And when you let go of this button, boom, you launch. So I got to figure out, unfortunately none of this is labeled. So we're gonna have to ohm these out to figure out which button is what bundle. I gotta start there and then label these and I may just put a plug on the ends and label them up so when we get to doing stuff and things boom all that's labeled up here's all the stuff I trimmed out or pulled out or replaced out of that side it still looks busy under there but there was a lot more junk in there I'll tell you that well that was a lot easier than I thought it would be completely guessed and got it for a shot. So I just swung it over to horseshoe mode. Touch two wires together. Hit the meter, hit the button at the same time, which is fun. And boom, we got resistance. So that's going to be the bottom button. That's going to be the top button. You're going to go get some tape and mark those up. And I have decided to wait to wire this up until I figure out what in the world I'm going to do with this situation sorry about that whooshing noise got a lag burner ripping right behind you well below zero outside I'm trying to keep it you know above death and here the boys are actually on the other side mopping and cleaning for pops so this is the ignition coil wire and unfortunately it's too short this is a new set I've got I think I got to run that yeller one it should hopefully work but we're gonna be running a set of porcelain acacels up here. Time to get the lightning hoses in. Now we learned on Charlotte doing all those burnouts. These saved us. We used to burn through wires relentlessly on that thing, no matter what we tried. And switch to a set of these and it seemed to resolve the issue. So that's what we're gonna be doing on the Chevelle here. And these are all custom fit, trim and assemble kind of deals. My favorite. Oh, well, we're just gonna hunker down, try to blast these lightning hoses on. Then the ignition system will be 100% complete. All we gotta do is get the fuel system done. Well, all we gotta do, it's gonna be a project, but then this thing should light off. I'm gonna dig right in. What is this? I don't know. Yep. Well, the guy's got this side all done. I'll probably make some zip tie 
uh, wire holders or something. Back one runs down and around. This side I ran into a little bit of a problem. I didn't even think about it when I ordered these. The header tubes are different from the Sanderson to these. I think these are hookers. But this angle is nowhere near close fitting here or here. And I'm a little bit nervous even on a porcelain 90 if I'm going to be able to slip it over those. But nonetheless, I'm going to see if I could find a couple 90s in porcelain for those two. Otherwise, we'll have to go, I guess, standard boot with Kevlar and hope that we don't have the burning issue. And I think those were the two that were the most common. Well, these three really, I think. But that's pretty much as far as I can get on the ignition side until I get those two in. But man, we're making progress. We're getting down to uh, fuel, fuel tank, stuff like that. Well, a guy would just be pulling on your leg if I didn't say I'm getting a little tired. Brian from Motion Raceworks is showing up tomorrow morning to pick up the motion truck. That's in storage on the other side over there. I gotta go through that thing bumper to bumper quick, get a battery charger on it, move some stuff around so we can get that loaded in the morning. So I think I am gonna call it tonight for Liberty, but stay tuned because we obviously have a ton of work to do. Fuel tank, fuel pump, fuel lines, fuel regulator. Gotta plumb in the fuel, make it happen here. We've got tons of suspension and brake stuff to do. So there's plenty more to come before sick week. And again, just a reminder, my friends, Chad and Haley will be driving Liberty here. Fingers crossed if I can get it done. Jessica and I are gonna be driving the Motion Raceworks truck through Sick Week that starts down in Florida. I believe ends in Florida. If you can make it out, come on out, it'll be fun. If not, we got you covered. We'll obviously uh, take you guys along for the ride. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Five tracks, five days. It's gonna be a blast, especially in that truck. If we can run low nines, whew, gonna be awesome. Thanks guys for watching, appreciate you very much. We'll see you soon.